Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated. I'm Brendan Gulick. This is the Buckeye Report. And uh, I guess today is the 16th of November, Tuesday of Michigan State Week. Can't believe that we have seen this season fly by the way we have. Already two games left in the regular season, and they are the two most consequential games for an Ohio State team that absolutely still has its opportunity in front of it. They control their own destiny. It certainly seems that way. Uh, if the Buckeyes win out the rest of the regular season, and if they win in the Big Ten championship game, the, the college football playoff committee has made it pretty clear that the Buckeyes are one of the top four teams in the country and would be included in the college football playoffs. So Ohio State certainly, uh, even though they lost in week two to Oregon, it feels like a million years ago at this point. And it's funny how an early season loss when you get late in the season can certainly feel so far in the rearview mirror. It's good that Ohio State has responded nicely after, uh, after frankly, a, a couple of questionable games at the beginning of the year. This team has certainly gotten better. And we saw, the, I, I frankly think we saw the best performance of the year for the Buckeyes uh, in that win over Purdue, considering that the level of competition against Purdue was probably as good as the Buckeyes have seen in the Big Ten. That's going to uptick a little bit this week. This is another good team coming to town in Michigan State. Obviously, everybody knows about Kenneth Walker. They run the football extremely well. Their pass defense is their weakness, and I think that's exciting for Ohio State fans because this pass offense for the Buckeyes has frankly pretty much been unstoppable. C.J. Stroud showcased it uh, again this past weekend with another terrific performance against the Boilermakers. We had a chance to talk with Ryan Day, with Zach Harrison, and with Garrett Wilson today. So we'll tell you a little bit about our, our big takeaways from that conversation, but just a couple housekeeping notes in case you haven't caught up. Uh, the Buckeyes kick at noon on Saturday against Michigan State. It's the final home game of the year, which means it's also senior day for Ohio State. There are going to be 24 seniors uh, that are supposed to be part of the senior day festivities. Now, there are a few guys on that list that you know may or may not still come back next year. Uh, there are a few guys on that list that are only here this year because the NCAA granted an additional year of eligibility because of COVID last year. And there are a number of players that are listed as seniors on the roster that are not going to be part of senior day festivities uh, which leads you to believe that perhaps they will be back for a fifth year with Ohio State next year. So senior day is, is always a little bit interesting um, because you're never really sure who's going to be back or who's not. But the reality is the Buckeyes uh, are, are probably going to say goodbye to something in the ballpark of 25 players. Um, that's fairly typical for the program, and, and obviously a number of them have made major impacts on Ohio State's team. So they will have senior day festivities for the final home game of the regular season at Ohio Stadium. Of course, the big one next week is up uh, in Ann Arbor. All right. Uh, by the way, the game is on ABC with uh, Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit and Holly Rowe uh, on television at noon on Saturday. And College game day is in town from ESPN. Okay. Uh, takeaways from Ryan Day today. Uh, I think the biggest thing that, that he said to me uh, about Garrett Wilson in particular is just how professional he's been. I had asked him what what was different about Wilson this year, and he said that he has taken a noticeable uh, step forward in trying to to be more professional in his approach. And that, that goes everything from just the way he's practicing to the way he's preparing during the week, the way he's taking care of his body. I mean, it's clear to anybody who has a set of eyeballs that Garrett Wilson has the ability to play NFL football. Uh, and he's probably going to be one of the first receivers, if not the first receiver drafted next April. So this is an opportunity for Garrett to enjoy his time here, but use this as so many guys have done before him uh, to be a training ground for him on how to be a professional football player. And you're seeing some pretty impressive results, certainly last week. Uh, and frankly, I think the last two weeks are the biggest reason why he's been so important. Two weeks ago, he didn't play. And Ohio State's offense struggled a little bit at times against Nebraska. Last week, he was out there, and look, you're talking about a Purdue team that had a couple of top five wins. Even if they didn't end up being what you thought they would be, they were still a high-quality opponent, and the Buckeyes absolutely shredded them through the air. And Garrett Wilson was a big part of that. So um, I don't think too many NFL scouts are going to have to dig too deep into Garrett Wilson's uh, Garrett Wilson's resume and, and – um, 
you know, figure out where he where he could be stumbling because this guy's the real deal for sure. He's fun to watch. So Ryan Day's been really impressed with with Wilson's professionalism. Uh, I asked Ryan Day about Michigan State when they're at their best and said, what's that look like? And he's he quickly said they're balanced. Everybody seems to know that they can run the football well, but uh, when Peyton Thorne is throwing it and that offense is clicking, it's when they're not predictable in the run game. It's going to be challenging for them to do this week, but I would expect that they would try uh, to keep Ohio State off balance on the defensive side. Um, beyond that, you know, Ryan Day continued to, to praise C.J. Stroud's uh, mental preparation. He reiterated that last week was his best week of prep at any point all year, and you saw really impressive results last week. Um, <laughs> he was asked about the, uh, the the weather and the atmosphere, playing in colder temperatures, playing in some fairly significant wind. Uh, Ryan Day laughed. He said, you know, I asked him before the game, hey, can a kid from Cali throw it, you know, in 40-degree weather with, with 10 or 15-mile-an-hour winds? And he said CJ laughed and said, of course, coach, no problem. Call what you need to call. Uh, obviously, it worked out just fine, including that pass that was uh, taken off the board because of a penalty the post route to Chris Olave over the middle for what would have been a touchdown. That ball was thrown into the teeth of the wind and probably would have been thrown 60 plus yards uh, had the wind not been blowing in his face. It was a pretty impressive throw. He made a number of really, really good ones this past weekend. So nice, nice to see that CJ Stroud is continuing on the mental side during the week, uh, putting in the work that he needs to put in to, to, you know, keep putting out good results. It's clearly working. So Ryan Day has been impressed with that. Um, and then the last thing that Ryan Day said that really stood out to me, he said, you know, having college game day in town, big game in late November, this is why you come to Ohio State. And I think there's a lot of fans that feel that same thought right now is, man, this is the time of year that we have been waiting for. Um, and, and even last year, you know, you, you, you just didn't have the same environment or the same atmosphere. Obviously, the, the rivalry game was canceled. You know, the game against Michigan State last year stunk. Michigan State is is a proud program that had a brutal year in uh, in in that last football season. Um, you know, the last four years really against Ohio State, this game hasn't been particularly competitive. The Buckeyes have won five in a row, but the last four scores have been pretty lopsided, and certainly last year, perhaps the most lopsided. Um, the Buckeyes have had good success, winning fourteen of the last seventeen against Michigan State, but there have been a couple of of memorable losses, not too far in the rearview mirror. Uh, but certainly a, a proud program in East Lansing and and one that, again, this year, the Buckeyes can't take lightly. But I just thought it was cool to, to kind of hear Ryan Day reiterate the fact that, you know, this is why, as a player, this is why you come to Ohio State for games, for weeks like this one and like next one. Uh, and as fans, I think that really hits deep because I think a lot of people are feeling um, the, the nostalgia and the gratitude that comes with having a chance to play in a game like this again. We talked with Zach Harrison, and uh, <laughs> he was pretty funny. He wouldn't bite on Austin Ward's question about the holding calls. Um, you know, he, he – he, well, let me rephrase that. The lack of holding calls. The, the holding calls that he isn't drawing because nobody's paying attention or something. I don't know. I mean, he's being held all the time. Uh, but Austin said something pretty hilarious when, when Zach, <laughs> Zach essentially said – you know, I have to be better about my technique. There, there are things that I'm doing that are allowing them to to block me. And and Austin said, wearing a jersey. And Zach kind of cracked a smile, laughed, and you know, acknowledged that yeah, it's probably been a little frustrating. Um, but you know, kudos to him for for uh, you know trying to just move on and say, look, there's nothing I can do about holding calls or or lack thereof. Um, but I, I certainly thought that was a, one of the more entertaining moments from uh, from this afternoon. Um, he was also asked about, you know, hey, is this is this possibly your last game at Ohio Stadium? Obviously, he's not a senior, but this is a guy that certainly appears to have an NFL future. And and he very quickly said, we got to beat Michigan State. Um, he, he has not made a decision yet. He further along said, you know, I have not decided on my future. I want to play this week. I want to beat Michigan State, and that's what we need to focus on as a team. Um, for what it's worth, Garrett Wilson essentially said the same thing. Uh, he also talked about the senior class, Zach Harrison did, and just how much he appreciated and, and enjoyed being around that group of guys uh, and, and said in particular that you know it's a, it's a group that's meant a lot to him throughout the course of his time here. 
Uh, he was also asked about Larry Johnson, who seems to be everybody's favorite person in the building. And uh, he said he, he is more thankful for Larry Johnson than he knows how to put into words things that Larry has done for him that um, or Coach Jay, as he likes to call him, uh, has done for him that he said it had made me even better off the field. Just learning how to carry myself and um, truly figuring out how to play the position, play football, not just be a great athlete chasing after somebody. Uh, so those are my major takeaways from Zach Harrison. And then Garrett Wilson, you know, I asked him about reflecting back on where he was as a high school recruit, going through the process of, hey, where do I want to go play college football? Choosing Ohio State, having the experiences he's had the last couple of years, and, and where he is right now, what he has in front of him. How has that all measured up to his expectations? And he, he you know, stood there for just a half beat, and he said, no, it's – it's been beyond anything I could have expected. Uh, he reflected back on the college football playoff game against Clemson that obviously didn't go their way. Um, but just the experience of playing in a game like that, you know, having opportunities to play uh, in super meaningful games. Obviously, this is a, a, a you know, a, a challenging year. Last year, he's really looking forward to the stretch run uh, and what they have in front of them and, and, you know, just made it very clear that um, this is everything he could have possibly hoped for. Uh, as an Ohio State Buckeye, and, and I know Buckeye Nation has certainly enjoyed watching him. Uh, that was my biggest takeaway. Again, he has not made a decision on the NFL yet. Um, and I, I also asked him about, you know, what what he's done to get better that, that Ryan Day had said, look, he looks more professional. I was kind of picking his brain on what that's looked like from his perspective. And he said something interesting, and I think maybe in some areas we can all identify with this a little bit, you know, he said, everybody tells you you're good. You're doing a good job. You, you know, you're playing well. They, they, they shower you with praise on things. He said, but I, I had to have some tough conversations with myself about, you know, am I really, am I really giving my best effort? Am I, am I really trying as hard as I can to be the best player that I can be? And he said, sometimes you, you find little instances where maybe it's not an active thought of, no, I'm going to cut this corner. You just don't push yourself in a spot that maybe you should. And he said, I, I had those tough conversations with myself and, and I've tried to address those. Well, look at what he's done this year. So wherever those little instances in, in Garrett's life uh, or work ethic or training regimen were that he tried to get better at, it's pretty obvious that he's taken a huge step forward this year. Um, he was certainly expected to be a big piece of this Ohio State offense. Uh, but my gosh, has he been unbelievably good this year, and especially coming off the four-touchdown effort he had last week. Uh, I, I really think you're getting a, a look at what his high-end capability looks like. It's been really fun to watch Garrett Wilson uh, and to have him play alongside Chris Olave and Jackson Smith and Jigba, who are having equally good years, is, uh, is pretty darn special. So not something that Ohio State – should be taking uh, taking for granted. All right, that's it for the Buckeye Report. That's kind of the uh, the rundown from this afternoon with Ryan Day, Zach Harrison, and Garrett Wilson. Uh, again, noon on Saturday at Ohio Stadium, the final game at home this season. Hard to believe it. The Big Ten Championship game, should the Buckeyes get there, is two weeks from Saturday. It is just around the corner, which, by the way, the Buckeyes could wrap up a Big Ten Championship game spot this weekend if they win – and if the team from up north loses, not sure if that'll happen or not, but uh, it certainly is possible that Ohio State could clinch. There is also a possibility that Wisconsin could clinch uh, in the West this weekend, which I got to be honest, a couple weeks into the regular season, I'm not so sure I thought that was going to come either. Uh, Wisconsin has gotten a lot better as the season's gone along. So things to keep, uh, keep in mind as you're pulling for the Buckeyes this weekend. Again, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for tuning into the Buckeye Report from the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. We've got a bunch of coverage planned for you the rest of the week. We'll have a good, a good preview for you on Friday. Of course, game day coverage on Saturday. We'll recap it on Sunday morning, as always. Hope you make Buckeyes Now your home for all things Ohio State. Follow us on our social media channels, Buckeyes Now SI. We've got a boatload of coverage for you over on our YouTube channel as well. You can check us out there, too. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again real soon.